Today we're making roses out of modeling chocolate. And this is pre-colored chocolate, and I've already made the modeling chocolate recipe, colored it, and let it condition. We're gonna take a ball and roll it out into a log. And this is probably about the size of a golf ball, um, not anything too big, and we're probably going to trim this down. But I'm going to roll it here on my table between parchment paper to help prevent making it overly warm. You can also use it directly on your stainless steel table. But if it starts to get sticky because of the hand warmth, work with it in your parchment paper. All right, I'm gonna put another sheet of parchment paper on top and press it down flat ever so slightly just to make it easier to roll. And then I'm going to pull that parchment off and release it from the chocolate. This allows me to continue moving the chocolate versus making it stick permanently to that parchment paper. Taking just any old roller and I'm rolling it flat one direction and then I'll turn my parchment paper and roll it the other direction. And it's probably about three quarters of an inch wide up to maybe an inch wide. This is gonna allow us to create two pieces, starter pieces for our roses. We're gonna cut this into two pieces across the diagonal. So straight across like that. Now, this has probably stuck a little bit to the parchment. It might be a little warm. We're gonna peel it up, release it from the parchment. If it's warm, try not to handle it too much. Let it cool off, let it cool off. And then using your thumb or the back of your finger, press the raw edge, one of the edges, a little bit thinner. This makes it look a little more natural, more like a petal. If it's too straight, it tends to not necessarily look like petals. Then starting from the pointed end, we're going to roll that bit of chocolate up about halfway, just a starter roll for the center of our rose. For the rest of this, I'm actually going to put on gloves because, well, chocolate is temperature sensitive and I'm afraid of making a big old chocolatey mess on my petals. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a heat barrier on by wearing gloves. And I have wonderful pre-made chocolate ganache truffles. They've been rounded and they're chilled, um, but you can use anything for this project. You could use strawberries, you could use spheres of solid chocolate. Um, you can use all kinds of great things, anything that fits kind of circular inside of this rose. Cutting off the extra, I just need a little bit of a tail to make it adhere to the chocolate truffle. Putting it right on top of the chocolate truffle and wrapping that tail to the underside. That becomes the very top of our rose. Moving that over to the side, and I'll take a moment to do the same thing on a second chocolate truffle. First by frilling or thinning the edge, then rolling the point. Cut off the extra, place it on top of the chocolate truffle and wrap the tail under that truffle. Next, we need to make a series of petals. So we're gonna start with Oh, I guess that's a modeling chocolate about the size of a plump blueberry or the width of my pinky. Just making a variety of these. Um, let's start with, I don't know, six to 12 initially. We just need a variety of similar sized balls of modeling chocolate. Don't play with it too much because it'll transfer too much heat. Just make quick little balls and plop them down. I am going to use my parchment for this because this is starting to warm up and I don't want it to stick. So smashing these guys flat, just a little bit flatter so they're easier to roll. And then I'm going to move most of these off of my parchment and just work with about three or four at a time. Placing the other parchment on top. And then using my roller, I'm going to press it down to flatten it slightly. And then roll from one direction across the top of these potential petals. I'm gonna turn it and roll the other direction. And then again, top and bottoms. I just keep rotating it and turning it slightly while I roll them out flatter and flatter. We, we need nice thin pieces of chocolate for this, but if it starts to stick, you know, give it time to cool. Peel that parchment off, it is starting to stick. And very quickly, reach from the bottom of each petal and rip it up off the parchment. Trying not to handle it too much so I don't transfer too much body heat to the chocolate. Okay, now we're going to apply one petal at a time. And I apply the left side and adhere it to the truffle, but the right side is free. 
This is important because we need to tuck the next petal right up under, just like that. Adhere it, but leave the right side free. And then we can roll those petals around, but don't really press them down too much because you're gonna to want to play with them a little bit. And we still need this edge free because we're gonna continue the process around and around this rose until we create a series or rows of petals. All right, let's do three more. Peel the chocolate up off of the parchment as quickly as possible <laughs> and continue applying it to our truffle. You can take the top edges of those petals and open them up ever so slightly. Give them a little bit of life, pinch them, crimp them slightly, shape them so they look more natural. Continuing with the process, lifting up that one right edge, sliding the petal in, and then continue placing petals one by one around the outside. Also, I start lowering the petals on the base. So if we continue going up with the petal placement, our truffle bottoms don't get covered. So we are going to slowly put those petals further and further and further down the base. I'm gonna put a little piece of red chocolate underneath here too to hide any possible chocolate truffle and to keep it nicely encased. Continue pinching and crimping the top edges of your petals to give them life and shape. Now, you could continue this process with just basic petals and finish off your rose, but we also have a technique where you can add veins and details to the petals use cookie cutters or petal cutters to create shapes. So we can do some very basic petals on the inside of this rose and then make beautifully detailed petals for the outer row and it adds a sense of elegance. It looks like you've spent a lot of extra time and detail and energy on the roses, but in reality, the center of the rose or the mass of the rose is very basic and easy to complete. And then we're spending a little bit of time on the outer petals to give them a lot of love. I've got my veiner here and my petals are a little bit larger because this, these petals are larger, my veiner's larger, but I'm just going to place one of my petals into the middle of that veiner, press the top, press it nice and firm so we get lots of detail. See all that detail and veining? Pull it out, let it cool just a minute and then using our cutter, cut out our shape. These are going to be our last or outer row of our rows. And we're going to continue veining and then attaching these the same way we did the other petals, leaving our right side free so we can slip the next petal into the first petal. So I've got all of my petals cut one at a time here. And now to insert them. Same process as before. Lift up the right side and then slide the next petal into place. And I'm a little bit lower. It's wrapping a little bit lower around the bottom base of my truffle. Now for the finishing details, we're going to go ahead and pinch out the ends of those petals as well. Make them nice and thin and kind of frilly. We can pleat them still. We can bend them, give them life. We want, them, we want these petals to have lots of character, like realistic character and love. If they look too cookie cutter cut out, sometimes it looks a little generic. But if you give it a little bend and a little shape, you have a beautiful rose that makes the most gorgeous centerpiece inside a box of Valentine treats. And I'm just using a basic cupcake tulip cup, which is kind of cool. You can pull the edges open to allow this truffle to sit inside. If you enjoyed what you saw here today, consider being a part of our Patreon channel. Your support means the world to us and helps keep everything moving. Enjoy full tutorials, exclusive content, and one-on-one -on -one instruction from me personally, Natalie. You'll find our channel at patreon.com slash artisincakes. You'll find the link down below.